Hi, I'm Bill Griggs from MakerMasters.com and I am going to show you how to change uh, the gearing system on a mini mill. Uh, I'm using Sterling Steel's uh, belt reduction drive uh, upgrade kit for designed for the Sieg uh, series of mini mills. You can get these at Harbor Freight and um, several other locations. Little Machine Shop sells them. This adds the ability to go faster with a cutting tool to you know, give you a wider range of tools that you can use. It also eliminates one important weakness that the mini mill has, and that's this plastic gear. These are prone to fail, and it's just a matter of time before they do. You're cutting metal, and sometimes metal will jam your tool, which will then strip these teeth. Going to a belt drive system will eliminate that risk. These are the items that I'm going to use uh, to change to the belt drive retrofit for the uh, Sieg X2 Mini Mill. Uh, I'm going to need the special wrench that uh, unlocks the uh, bolts from the spindle. Uh, the next piece is uh, the bar which allows you to uh, lock the uh, spindle head a flat screwdriver, needle nose pliers, a pair of dykes, some metric uh, Allen wrenches, Phillips screwdriver completes the uh, arrangement. My uh, retrofit kit came from the little machine shop that come. Um, they provide all sorts of accessories and parts for uh, mini mills and lays that you can uh, get that you constant, uh, commonly see in places like Harbor Freight um, or you can buy them direct from Little Machine Shop. Uh, the belt drive kit itself um, comes fairly well boxed up. Okay, the box includes a belt for the uh, belt drive. This is from uh, TrueFlex, and um, it's a pretty sturdy industrial grade belt. Also included in the box. is the unit itself. This belt drive comes with um, a plastic cover which protects the belt. It comes with the main gear. Which allows for two speeds. And it's keyed. The uh, pinion drive is also included. Both well machined parts. This mount replaces the uh, parts that are currently on top of the head of the mill. Uh, there's an adjustable plate which sets the belt tension and the uh, main gear mounts to here. Uh, up on this top portion is where the uh, drive motor will be. Through the side you see they have a slot to allow you to use the um, locking pin to lock the spindle in place. There's also an assortment of uh, hardware included, uh, everything that you'll need to complete uh, the build, as well as a tie strap because we're going to be cutting the one that's on the machine off and this will allow us to replace it. Pull the lever and lock that in place. What we're going to be replacing on the mill um, is this uh, black plate which is on the top of the head which uh, supports the motor unit and uh, the top end of the uh, uh, spindle. Beneath here are some plastic gears and those are prone to fail over time and this should eliminate this as well as give us a higher top speed 
uh, that we can achieve. Now I've unplugged the unit and uh, removed the uh, spindle uh, screw. Now I've unplugged the unit and uh, removed the uh, spindle uh, screw. One of the things that you're going to have to do once you lower this is to move the speed range lever to the back position. Okay, the next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to remove this uh, twist tie which is holding the uh, two motor cables together and I'm using a set of diagonal cutters to do that making sure that I'm clipping just the twist tie. Okay, we'll replace that later. But uh, this gives us access to these wires without worrying about uh, crimping them. Next, we're going to have to loosen the uh, set screw on the uh, front of the uh, spindle. And that's on the uh, spanner nut, uh, which is at the top. Remove the uh, rod. And take the spindle lock rod and insert it into the recess on the side of the uh, spindle and turn the spindle till the rod goes home. Okay, and that locks the spindle in place. Okay, with the uh, spindle lock rod in place, I'm going to take that special spanner wrench and we're going to apply it to the nut to loosen it. And if you go righty tighty, lefty loosey on this, you'll be wrong. You got to go the opposite direction because this is uh, threaded the other way. So let's give that a shot. That, that loosens it. That set screw up, it might take you some time to find a safe place to. Uh, do this from. But eventually it will loosen up enough that you can do it with your fingers. And that removed it. You'll set that piece apart uh, aside for later. Uh, you set that piece aside for later. And that removed it. You'll set that piece apart uh, aside for later. Uh, you set that piece aside for later. You'll set that piece apart uh, aside for later. Uh, you set that piece aside for later. Next, we're going to have to uh, loosen these uh, socket head screws. This is a five millimeter screw. The ones in the back might be a little easier with a conventional um, Allen wrench. The 
the T-handles are nice, but sometimes you just have to have a smaller wrench. This could take a while. Got all four of those screws loose finally. Just uh, about a minute each one. Those were um, six millimeter screws, and you use a five millimeter uh, Allen key to get those out. Okay, next we're supposed to lift this off. Completely off. Okay, that should hold it while I'm working. Okay, that motor housing has four um, screws, Phillips head screws, that hold it on, and we're going to take those off and remove the motor. Now we're not going to need this plate in the uh, construction of the, the next part, so we're going to put it aside. In case we ever want to reconvert the mill back, we'll save the plate. But I can't think of too many good reasons why you'd want to do that. You can still see the white lithium grease on the inside. The motor cable is not quite long enough to lay that down comfortably on the mill head, so on the mill bed. So we're going to try something a little different. Because the motor cable wouldn't uh, reach, we're going to use this V-block plate that I have for other milling operations. Put that onto the uh, and that gives just enough height for the motor to rest without stretching the cable. If you don't have a V-block, you can come up with some other um, object that give you enough height up above the table to rest this. Uh, just feel a little more secure with it resting in something nice. 